Hello, this video is about how to use remote functions in Roblox. Uh, in the previous video, we looked at remote events and also filter enabled, which we'll be going over in this one as well. Uh, but the difference between remote events and remote functions is that they basically they do the same thing, but a remote function uh, can return uh, information or messages back to a local script uh, once it's been fired. Okay, so once it's done an action on the server, it can return. Uh, information back telling us you know whether it was uh, completed or uh, whether it failed etc so we can send messages back uh, in the video we're going to be going over uh, remote functions and we're going to be doing a demonstration to show you how they work as well and how they would work in uh, in a roblox game like certain use cases uh, so let's get straight into it uh, so i've got a rocket here credit to uh, darkened and and eternity uh, by the way, for the model, which I found in the toolbox. Uh, this rocket, uh, we're going to make it go to space, okay? And what we want to do is we, we want to only uh, launch this rocket if a player knows the code, okay? So only certain players will be able to launch it. Um, so you'll need, you'll need the code. Now, what we'll do, uh, we've already got the script to launch the rocket, okay? It's somewhere in this model. But we're not going to learn how to actually, you know, get into the scripting of launching a rocket. But I've set this rocket up so that uh, this value called launcher, if we just change it to true or false, it doesn't matter. If we just change it, uh, change its value, then the rocket will, will lift off. OK, so what I've got here in a local script in this rocket launch GUI, uh, I've got a text box and a, te and a text button called launch button. So when the user inputs their... Uh, their code in this box okay and then they click launch uh, we're going to launch this rocket but we've got to check to see whether the code is correct now uh, we'll go into this local script and this is what I currently have now there are a couple of issues with this code the first issue is that because we are uh, trying to fire the rocket from the client and we have filter enabled turned on the we're gonna tr we're gonna make this change on the server in the workspace but this change is only gonna uh, it's, it's, it's only gonna change for us okay because the server is gonna see that we're trying to change the value of the launcher and then because filtering enabled on uh, it will prevent us from making that change okay I explained more about that in the previous video if you haven't checked it out I'll leave a card or put a link in the description so I'll show you if we go into the game uh, here we go and I'll just type in the code again 1337 uh, it says firing rocket so the local script has said it's fired but it's not going anywhere okay and if you go into the rocket model the launcher value is set to true on our end on the client okay but if we head to the server and this is the server's copy of the game and this is what be this is what all the other players would have it is it should still be false yeah there we go it's still false okay um and it, it wouldn't launch it would only uh it would only set the the value to be true but because this these scripts that are in the rocket are server scripts and they run on the server the server's copy is still set to false so it's not going to go anywhere so uh we have a problem we can't launch the rocket from the client so we're going to need to use a remote event or a remote function so which one do we use now this brings us to our second problem and this is that we are storing the code to launch the rocket uh, in the local script and this is a really really bad thing to do uh, let me just uh, change the text of our text box here there we go um, this is a really bad thing to do because Anybody that doesn't know the code, if we're storing it in a local script, you know that local scripts, they run on the player's computer, okay? So w the player uh, runs the local script. So this means that a player could uh, could use exploiting software uh, to view the local script, okay? And they could see, aha, the code is 1337, and now they know what it is, okay? So that's what we don't want. We don't want players to be able to exploit the game to find out what the code is so we're going to need to store the code on the server uh, this is because if we store it on the server in a, in a server script um, which runs on the server clients don't have access to, to to those scripts okay 
So we're going to have a script in server script service, okay? And we're also going to need a remote function. But why do we need a remote function and not a remote event? Uh, well, as I said, a remote function returns information back to the client once we have triggered that remote function. Uh, so an example would be if we put in the wrong code and then we checked whether the code was correct on the server, if it was correct, then we would launch the rocket on the server and then we could send information or a message back to the local script to say that it was a success. And then we could set the text of our text box to say uh, success, launching rocket. But if the code was wrong, we could send a message from the server to the client saying that it was an incorrect code. And that way we could display on the screen to our player that the code was wrong and they need to try again. Okay, so the first thing we're going to tackle is checking whether the code is correct on the server and actually firing the rocket on the server. So let's get rid of this um, if statement here. And instead, we're going to find our remote function. Now, if you haven't got a remote function in your game yet, click on the plus in replicated storage and then just type uh, remote function and uh, just add one in there. OK, we're, gonna, we're just going to keep it uh, named remote function because it's the only one we have in our, in our game. So we're going to say uh, game dot replicated storage dot remote function. Uh, and then what we're going to do is instead of saying fire server, we're going to uh, invoke it. OK, so uh, if you want to uh, trigger a remote function, we, we say we invoke it. So we say colon invoke server. Now, what we're going to do, we need to pass our data to the server. We need to tell the server what the client has inputted OK, into the text box. And that will be the code, obviously. So as a parameter, we're going to send to the server the contents of our text box, OK, because the server actually can't access anything in the player GUI. So we need to send that uh, to to the server, OK? So we've put that as a uh, parameter and that data is going to be sent to the server. So now let's go into our server script and actually script how we're going to pick up this uh, request okay this this invoke so in our server scripts let's just put server script here so you know what, what, what we're in server script and we'll do the same in the local script okay in our server script we are going to um, set up a listener okay um, similar to an, an event listener um, it's actually we're actually going to bind um, our remote function so whenever that gets triggered we're going to bind it to a function called a callback function. And I'll explain what one of those is soon. So firstly, we're gonna say game.replicatedStorage.remote function. We put it in replicated storage so that it can be viewed uh, by both the server and the client. So game.replicatedStorage.remote function. Now, because we've invoked it from the client and we're picking it up on the server, we just say dot on server invoke. So when the server is invoked, because on, on the client, we said invoke server. So on server invoke, uh, what we do, instead of saying colon connect, we just say equals function. Okay, and we create a function just as you would uh, in, in a normal script if you're making a function to run code. Now, this is called, uh, we're binding it to a function. So whenever, a, whenever the remote event is invoked, we bind it to this function and any code inside of this function will run whenever we uh, invoke the server, invoke that remote event. Now we've got our arguments. The arguments are the data which we pass through the parameters. Remember we passed our code uh, which the user inputted, but we also uh, passed the we also pass the name of the player automatically. Roblox passes that for us, and we don't need to write it in our local script. It just automatically passes. But the player uh, comes always comes first on the server. So look, we'll put our player in first, our player argument, and you can call these arguments whatever you want. So it could be PLR, it could be player, uh, player. You could even say dog, but we're going to say player because that just makes the most sense. And then the second one, obviously, is going to be our code which they have inputted. And that code is going to correspond to textbox.text. Okay. So now we've got our arguments. What we need to do is we need to check uh, to see whether the code is correct. Okay. So we can just say if the code 
is equal to, and then we're going to do a string, okay? Because the text box text is always a string, okay? If even if it's a number, that number is going to be in a string. So the code which you want the player to use to launch the rocket, you're going to put in here. So we could put one three three seven. I'm going to change it to one three three seven noob, uh, just to be different. Uh, so if the code is equal to 1337 noob, don't forget the two equal signs, by the way, because it's an if statement. So if that is the correct code, then we're just going to drop a line, make sure that end is added in. And uh, then what we can do is we can launch the rocket by saying game.workspace.rocketmodel. And then we can say uh, .launcher .value equals true. Okay. Um, Again, we're only just setting it, setting the launch value because there are other scripts in this rocket which, which will cause it to take off. Um, and what we've done here, we've just uh, launched the rocket and we can just do a print to say rocket launched. So what we've done so far is the exact same as a remote event. We have, uh, we have invoked it or fired it as we would with the remote event and we've picked it up on the server uh, and we've launched it. Now, if we head into the game, and we uh, put in a different code. It's not, nothing's happening, okay? But if we put in 1337 noob, you can see it's started to shut the door and launch. And if we head into the rocket model, not only is it uh, true, the value is true for us on the client, but it's also true on the server. So all clients and the server will be seeing the same thing because the launching of the rocket and the the setting of this value to true has been done on the server in a server script this one here uh, because it's been invoked by a remote function and the code was already written okay there we go we're going off in our rocket the code is already written in this script and we were just waiting for the remote function to be invoked by the client um so we've done exactly the same as a remote event but i told you that with a remote function, we can return information back to the local script. If you're not going to return information back, you might as well just use a remote event. But we're going to return back whether the code uh, that they entered was the right one or if it was incorrect. So if the code is equal to 1337 noob, then at the end of our, at the end of this if statement, just before the, the end, we're going to say return. And this is how we send messages back, send information back. You say return and the the data that comes after return gets sent back to the local script okay so we could return true okay if, if it was a success else if the code is wrong then we could return false okay it doesn't matter what you return you could return a string uh, saying true or you could say return you could return a correct code it's up to you you could write you could return anything but we're just going to do true or false for now okay so we're returning that to our local script and it's going to send either true or false back to the local script here okay so returning just means to to send back uh, a value in this case so we're sending back the value true or false to the local script so how do we pick up um what we've returned okay we're back in our local script and i'm saying that you can return things but how do we actually get that information uh well what we do is we we take this line of code, the invoke, invoke server, and we're going to set it as a variable. Okay, so local, and then I'm going to call it result. So the result is what's going to be returned back. So the result is equal to replicated storage, remote function, invoke server. Okay, and when we do return something, uh, say it was returned true, then result would actually equal true. Okay, so the, the value that we return basically replaces this line of code okay um the invoke server basically re basically will return whether it's true or false and then re the result will either be equal to true or equal to false and just to prove this if we say print result here all right and we go and try it again and we put in 1337 new and click launch you can see it returned true but if we just type in something different, it returns false, okay? So it's returned true or false, and then it's been set as the result variable, uh, and there we go, it's printed it out. So now we can do an if statement to say if result is equal to true, 
Then we could say launch button dot text is equal to success. Just one equals there. Else, if it's if it's not true, it's going to be false. We could say launch button dot text equals fail. Okay, and do the same thing again. We, uh, play the game. We put in one three three. It says fail, but if we do 1337 noob and do it again, it says success. So it's just, it's firing back a value to the local script from the, from the server to basically say whether it, was, whether it was a success or not, okay? Now this is only one use case for a remote function, okay? You can return back any data. So let's say you had a load of items uh, in a shop which are stored on the server. You could return back a table with information about those items, like the name, the price, um, the, the the object, if you wanted to use it in like a viewport frame. And I'll be making more videos on how that works with the remote function um, in the future. I do have some videos uh, which do already use remote functions for things like shops, such as my uh, sword fight game series with the, with the shop or the mining simulator shop uh, on my channel. But uh, you don't have to return true or false. Again, you could return uh, success or you could return uh, epic fail. Okay, and you could say in the local script, if result is equal to success as a string, don't forget, because we returned it as, as a string data type because of those speech marks. Uh, else if result is equal to epic fail, then again, it would say fail, okay? Um, so that is how a remote function works, okay? It's the same as a remote event, okay? It does an action on the server when you call it from a local script, but the only difference is that a, rem a remote function will return some data to the local script. If you're not returning any data, use a, if you're not planning to, use a remote event. If you're planning on returning something back to the uh, to, the, to the local script though, uh, like whether it was a success or not, or also another example is if you're trying to buy something, okay, you always want to um, do the checking to see if they have enough money or deducting the money on the server so that can't be exploited. And then if the player doesn't have enough money, you can return back to the local script to say that it, they haven't got enough. Uh, or if they do have enough money, you could return back saying it was a success and that they now have the item. Um, so if you aren't returning, use a remote event. And also, I need to tell you this, a remote function yields, okay? Yields, okay? That was pretty hard to say. Yields, okay? If you didn't know what I said, yields, okay? What that means is if it yields, um, then noth nothing else in this local script is going to run until you have returned a value, okay? So if we called the remote function here, the local script's going to stop until all of the code has been executed uh, in the server script until you've returned something, okay? So the script, the local script won't continue until you have got something returned from the remote function, okay? Um, that's why uh, the success uh, text, we're checking to see if result is equal to success, but you can't do this if statement until you have something returned. Uh, to your result value, like a true or false value. So um, a remote function, uh, invoke server, it yields, uh, and that just means that the script will stop at this line until something is returned back to the local script. Whereas a remote event wouldn't because it never returns anything. Okay, um, so that is all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in another one. If you have any suggestions for filtering enabled content, uh, etc. Leave them in the comments down below. I read them all and I take on your your feedback and your ideas if I can. Uh, don't forget to use creator code Alvin Blocks when you buy Robux or Builders Club. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell and again I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.